bring you a special news bulletin. Russell Harrison, millionaire industrialist, was killed an hour ago. He apparently lost control of his car. He was alone. His only survivors are a son, Barnaby Harrison, age 12, and a brother, Major Kevin Harrison, British intelligence, World War II hero. on the other, I'm going to whack you both. And right where it'll do the most good. Play nice. Well, this whole voyage only takes eight hours. And so far, you've managed to spill ink on the captain's chart. You covered the sofa in the lounge with ice cream and chocolate syrup. And now you're at each other's throats. I thought we were lucky to have a little girl going along with us to the island. I told you we weren't. Girls bring out the worst in me. Well, once we're on the island, and my aunt picks me up. You won't have to worry about me anymore. And I won't have to listen to your lousy lies either. They aren't lousy lies. My uncle was a famous spy. And my father did leave me millions when he died. And, and uh, what else did I tell you? That you were a policeman. Show her the badge. Barnaby. Show her the badge, Sergeant. Then she'll have to shut up. Well, it's true, Chrissy. I am a policeman. Okay. Is Barnaby under arrest for something? <laughs> no, I'm taking him to the island to join his uncle. Uncle Kevin's my only living relative now. And he owns the biggest house on the whole island. Well, Barnaby ought to be arrested for something. He tried to push me off the boat before I hit him. I did not try to push her. I was only helping her. Barnaby. Do you realize what would happen to you two if you fell into the waters around here? I'm not meant to die that way. How are you meant to die? I don't know, but it's not going to be around some broken old tub like this. I think it's a nice boat. My father had a cabin cruiser. It was 80 feet and he had a Barnaby! Bar Shut up. Now, do you two think you could stay here on deck in peace while I go find the captain and pay for the cleaning of the sofa? I won't start anything if she doesn't. Sure glad we couldn't get the lifeboat loose. Yo, show talk funny. I do not talk funny. 
Must be nice taking a vacation with the policeman to look after you. It's no vacation, stupid. A vacation is what spies call a cover. The sergeant and I are on a secret mission. That's a lie. Isn't it? You just say I'm lying one more time, just once more, and I won't tell you anything at all about the mission. I take it back. All right. I won't know much more until my uncle gets back with the president's orders. But all I know so far is that the Joint Chiefs of Staff are coming to the island. Buy a nuclear submarine, I suppose. Where's your little friend? She's changing her clothes. What did you spill on her? I didn't spill anything on her. I guess she wants to look good when she gets to the island. The captain just received this from the mainland, sir. Hope you can read his writing. Thank you. What's the matter? Your uncle's been delayed a day. This is a departmental authorization for me to remain at his house until he gets there. Great! We'll get to spend another whole day together. Yeah. Yeah, that's just what I was thinking. Well, I better go acknowledge this. It's beautiful, isn't it? Serenity Island. Yes, the most beautiful of all the islands off the coast. How long does the boat stay? Ship, not boat. Thirty minutes. Do you ever go there much? You mean set foot on it? Never. But why not? Because it's cursed. Cursed? <laughs> By what? The sharks? The sharks came eight years ago. Great schools of killers and started driving the people away. Serenity Island was a real place once. Lovely hotel, fine fishing, the air friendly. Yes, a real place once. But now it's dead. But that's impossible. Highlands just can't die. Can't they? <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> the captain finally saw the island. <laughs> it's sure grown a lot since I saw you last, Chrissy. How's the six been? You just like I remember you. Well, this is it. It's not very big, but I think you'll find it comfortable. I like it, Aunt Justine. It's just like your letter said it would be. Can I see where I'm going to sleep? Yeah, sure. Come on, I'll give you the ground too. We live in a trailer court. There's always a lot of people around. It used to bother my mother. She says, What's the point in living in a trailer if you never go anywhere with it? Well, Diane always was restless. My mother had a little one like this, of you and her. Snapshot. Have you heard from your mother lately, Chrissy? Got a Christmas card from her. With $25 in it. Well, that was a nice present, wasn't it? Card came from Montreal, Canada. Your boyfriend? He was. Did he marry somebody else? No. Come on, I'll show you to your room. Okay. Was this my mother's room when she was little? She and I shared it. It keeps you company, I guess. Yes, it does.
Don't you like your room, Chrissy? Oh, it's fine. It's almost as big as the old trailer where I live. You're very pretty, Aunt Justine. Just like I remember my mother when I was little. You miss your mother very much, don't you? Oh, I have a stepmother now. And since she owns a trailer court, we don't have to pay trailer space. Makes it real nice for my father. Gives him more of a chance to be alone in the trailer with my stepmother. You must understand, Chrissy, that when people get married, they need to spend a little time together. They just got tired of having me around and put me on the first boat. No, that isn't true. I asked your father to let you come. I was lonely. I wanted company. We're going to have a lot of fun together. I'm only sorry there aren't any other children on the island. But at least there's a boy that was on the boat. Oh, he's an awful liar. I don't want to have anything to do with him. Chrissy. Hey, why don't we have some dinner? I'll get out the dishes and maybe the candlesticks. It's been a long time since I had a guest to dinner. I'm no guest. Can I help? All right. You get the candles. They're in the kitchen on the left-hand side of the lower shelves. Okay. It's all right. Just fine. Catchman, what the hell are you doing in here? I heard you were having company. I brought you fish. I was going to prepare them for you. Well, why didn't you ring the bell instead of scaring the wits out of my niece? Look, just leave the fish alone. I'll take care of them. And uh, thank you. It was very nice of you. Don't be afraid, miss. There's nothing on the island to be afraid of. Isn't it right, Miss Justine? I'm awfully sorry he scared you, Chrissy. That's okay, Aunt Justine. special, right? That's right, Barnaby. How did you know? I read an article about the detective bureau in the Sunday papers. Barnaby, why don't you get your pajamas on? Hmm? I'm not tired. Did you ever kill anybody with that? I winged a 211 suspect one night outside a liquor store, but he pulled through in great shape. What's a 211? That's section 211 of the penal code. Armed robbery. Oh, then he had a gun, too. Mm -hmm. He shouted it out. That we did. Oh, gosh. What, what kind of a gun did he have? A sawed-off shotgun. Crazy. I'll bet you got a citation. Barnaby. The pajamas, huh? Sure, Sergeant. Did you get a citation? Yes. I'll show it to you sometime. Oh, I'm glad they assigned you to bring me all the way across the country, Sergeant. Hmm. Oh, have you read my uncle's book yet? Yeah, just the introduction. He's a pretty famous man. He was a hero during World War II. Mm -hmm. He worked with the British intelligence. He was the best and the greatest in the whole war. Yeah, I'll bet he tells a lot of interesting stories, hmm? I don't know. I've only seen him a couple of times in my life. So he's traveling around the world, looking for a war that interests him, I guess. Sure kills a lot of people in the book. Well, it was war on. They were trying to kill him. Oh, so it's just like outside the liquor store. The 211 suspect was trying to kill you. Huh. Your uncle was a hero, Barnaby. I'm in the civil service. 
Wait till you get to the chapter where he kills the Gestapo chief for Sherburn. It's the best part. What happened? He walks right into the Gestapo man's office, dressed up as an SS general. Closed the door behind him and silently walked up to him and strangled him with a steel garrote as thin as a piano wire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of the whole book. It sounds great. I can hardly wait. Excuse me. Nazi, you tortured your last French woman. Put that down. I said put it down. Uh, I'm sorry, Sergeant. I was just getting a feel of it. Barnaby, you leave my gun alone. Do you understand that? Leave it alone. I'm sorry. I really am. All right. Now, look, it's been a hard day for both of us. Why don't you run off to bed? Good night, Sergeant. Good night. Sergeant, I won't touch your gun again. I've got your word. Promise. Chrissy. Plenty more where that came from. It's funny. I usually only have a cup of coffee for my breakfast. Aren't you a little young for coffee? Well, I guess so. But my father only has a cup of coffee and a cigarette before he goes to work. I keep him company. Oh, I used to. Could I have some more juice, please? Sure you can. What do you want to do today? Hey, we could go swimming. Well, I never learned when I was a kid. Mm. Well, even as old as you are now, I'm sure I can teach you. Oh, I invited the sergeant and Barnaby over this morning. There goes my appetite. Come on, Chrissy. After all, he's the only little boy on the island. <laughs> I guess you hadn't eaten for a week. I have so. The ocean gives you an appetite. At least that's what Aunt Justine says. Hey, where's Sergeant Travis? He and Justine are talking. I guess they like each other. How could they like each other, stupid? They just met. I only met you, and already I dislike you a whole lot. Well, why don't you get out of here? Okay. Well, have you kids decided what you want to do today? Sure. Chrissy wants to see Uncle Kevin's house. I do not. Well, if he really is a real hero, I guess I wouldn't mind looking at it. Well, suppose Justine and I go swimming and uh, you kids meet us back here later. That sounds fine. But there are a few places on the island where you have to be careful. Now, Death Beach is full of sharks and the hotel is very dangerous. It's old and falling apart and I want you two to stay away from it. You told my aunt you were going to show me the Major's house. I am. Right after we leave here. want to go in there. Why not? It says welcome. Let's go. That one says danger, keep out. I believe in the welcome sign. They don't mean welcome anymore. They can't take it back. A welcome's a welcome. Come on.
stage, front and center. Barnaby, leave it alone. There's nobody to answer it, stupid. I wonder what caused that. Maybe lightning hit it. Lightning hit the trailer court once. Scared me and the sitter. My father was very mad at my mother when he came home from work. Is your mother very pretty? She's beautiful. I look like my father. My mother only likes nightclubs, so that's where she was when the lightning struck. Does your mother have nice legs? That's none of your business. Guess she can go to nightclubs all the time, ma'am. You mean your mother and father don't live together anymore? Not for a year. Where is your mother? Oh, she died when I was little. Oh. What was that? How do I know? What was it? Maybe a ghost. Anyway, it's gone now. Wanna be let's get out of here. No. We haven't seen all the hotel yet. Well, I've seen enough. Well, take off. Wanna be wait a minute. What now? You want a banana? What? Aunt Justine gave them to me this morning. And they give you energy. Have you ever thought of uh, looking for your mother? I did once. If she was interested in us, she would have stayed. At least that's what my father said. What was that? The front door. It's just the wind. But there is no wind. Barnaby, let's get out of here. Oh, Chrissy. Barnaby. Shh. April 10th, 1954. Hey, that's over 12 years ago. I was just a baby then. You still are. the king. You will bow down before me, or I'll have your head chopped off. Oh, Barnaby. Come on, let's get out of here. Okay. I've seen enough. Really? Really? We can come back again sometime. Barnaby? Barnaby, where are you? Barnaby, please come back.
I'll take you back to Justine. I wouldn't have tried to scare you if I'd known there was a pool with a shark in it. Who are you? Barnaby Harrison. I'm a friend of Chrissy's aunt. You are not. Do you live here at the hotel? We are the only guests. favorite song. He has me sing it whenever he has a headache. You mean he has a headache whenever you sing it. <laughs> we never had abalone steaks before. We usually had, uh, oh, filet mignon and porterhouse steaks. Served on a golden dish, I suppose. Well, as a matter of fact... Barnaby, didn't anybody ever tell you it's bad manners to brag about how well you have it? Hmm? Yeah. My father did. Here, let me help you. Thank you, Sergeant. And why not make it Frank? All right, Frank. Nice that the Sergeant's here. Isn't it, Aunt Justine? Yes, it is. Now you can forget about the boy in the picture that you keep on the mantel. The one who left you? You don't know what you're talking about, Chrissy. Barnaby. Mm -hmm. You wanted to take a walk, didn't you? In the dark? Barnaby. Well, come on, stupid. We're being sent away so the grown-ups can talk. I don't want to go with you. Chrissy? Would you go with Barnaby if I asked you to? Sure, Sergeant. I'd do anything if you asked me to. Come on, stupid. Come on, stupid. You have a fan, Sergeant. Sergeant? I'm terribly sorry. Frank. You know, kids are funny. She said what she did just now deliberately, just to upset you. I know, but it's understandable. Chrissy's mother is pretty much gone from her life now, and her father's married again, and they don't want her around. I wouldn't exactly say that they were lucky kids. No. That's strange. You don't get many planes flying over the island. He's gonna land! I'm sorry I couldn't get here before. Sorry I wasn't here to meet you. Oh, that's okay. I'm just glad you're here now. Hello, young lady. What's your name? Chrissy. Hello, Chrissy. Do you have orders from the president? Uh, don't listen to her. She's just a girl. Remarkable observation, Barnaby. <laughs> oh, this is a great island, Uncle. There are sharks and tarantulas and a catch man. Oh, yes. I remember the catch man slightly. We haven't told anybody else. But there's a pool at the old hotel with a shark in it. We weren't supposed to go there, but it almost got Chrissy. Hello, Major. 
Sergeant Travis. My pleasure, Sergeant. Sorry to have detained you. Oh, no trouble. I'll take the steamer out tomorrow afternoon. And Justine. You won't remember me, but I remember you. A lovely teenage beauty. A creature of the sun and the sand. Which indeed you are now. Welcome home, Major. Thank you. Barnaby been giving you any trouble? Oh, no, nothing we couldn't handle. Well, Uncle's here now. We'll keep him busy. Show me the shark in the pool. Sure. Well then, we'll have to go before anybody else on the island is up. After all, it is off limits, isn't it? Maybe nobody else will know. That's right. Operation Shark. Barnaby, I almost forgot. I ran across something in the den last night. I thought you might like to have it. Thank you, Uncle Kevin. Is it money? No. It's a badge of identification. It was used, and for all I know may still be used, by members of the Triad. The Triad? The world's oldest criminal organization. The Triad is older than the Sicilian Mafia. The Italian Camorra. Older even than the ancient murder cults of India. The triad is older than all of these. What do the letters say in English? The three symbols of the triad. Earth, sky, and water. You look so tired, Barnaby. Perhaps the trip is too long for you. No. No. Before the time of the Manchus, the triad held all South China in a vice of terror. Extortion, plunder, murder. You look so tired, Bob. Major Harrison. Just a moment. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, sir. Has Barnaby been in to see you this morning? No. Isn't he in his room? No, he's not. I'll check out the rest of the house. I'll get dressed immediately.
pulse is all right. It's a little rapid, maybe. Did he say anything? That is when he was on the rocks. No, I don't think so. But I'd only carried him a little way when I ran into you. Where's my uncle? Well, he's out looking for you, son. Why? He's on a cliff. Yes, that's right. If Justine hadn't come along, you'd have gone over. What were you doing there, Barnaby? My uncle took me there. What are you talking about? My uncle took me to the cliff. He's trying to kill me. You've got to help me, Sergeant. My uncle's trying to kill me. Barnaby. Did you see anybody on the cliff with him? You were all alone, Barnaby. I kept screaming and you kept walking. There was no one with you. And he did something that made me go there. Last thing I remember. We were on a path. And he gave me the badge of the triad. The what? The triad. It's the world's oldest criminal society. Where's the badge now, Barnaby? Must have taken it back. He came in just after it started getting light. He was wearing a, a beret and a, and a soldier's jacket. He said not to wake anybody, that the hotel was off limits. Was he dressed like this, Barnaby? Yeah, just like that. Barnaby. That picture was taken 24 years ago. You don't believe me. I tell you, my uncle's trying to kill me. Barnaby, he was here. I had to wake him up to help me find you. Sergeant, don't leave the island today. Well, Barnaby, I've got a job to go back to. Please, please, even if you don't believe a word I say, stay around a while longer. Please, don't leave the island. I think that's an excellent suggestion, Barnaby. Where on earth were you, son? Would you like to stay on, Sergeant? Your chief and I had a lot of fun working behind the German lines a couple of wars ago. Uh, he hasn't forgotten a minute of it. And I think that if he was kind enough to let you bring Barnaby out here, he'd be willing to let you get a couple of days fishing in, for old time's sake. Well, that's very kind of you to offer, Major. I'm sure that nothing would please Barnaby or myself. And perhaps Justine? More? Hey, Barnaby. How is your nap? You gave us quite a shock, you know. You're not very communicative, Barnaby, considering the fact that I persuaded your sergeant to stay on. He says you were rather vague in explaining your morning stroll. But perhaps he was trying not to hurt my feelings. I imagine you told him some wild story of me leading you off to see the shark. Then it wasn't a dream. under my roof. You're putting on weight. You did try to kill me. What an awful thing to say about your uncle. I'd have managed it too. That'd be for that fool girl coming along screaming Barnaby, breaking that lovely spell. You hypnotized me. And gave you some simple instructions. Wait 15 minutes. 20 paces along the path. Twenty paces to your left, you were doing so beautifully. Another twenty seconds, you would have been over the cliff. But I give you my word that you're safe here. You can think of this house as um, Switzerland. Switzerland? 
Switzerland? A neutral country. I can't let anything happen to you while we're alone together in this house. I never convinced anybody there was an accident. And that's what your death must see. An accident. You're crazy. You know that? You're crazy. Madness and sanity are matters of degree. But it is a simple fact that I am broke. You're a charming child, Barnaby. But five million dollars charming, you're not. Ah, you're afraid of this. Well, we'll put it away for a moment and perhaps find something else. Somebody What's that? Very useful if you're crawling down a sewer in Paris. And the Hun's just round the corner. He pops his head out to take a look. <laughs> and don't do it again. Puts out the light. I could get so much accomplished. But not on neutral ground, eh? Let's eat. I'm hungry. I'm not hungry. Now, now, Barnaby. Won't get anything done on an empty stomach. There we go. The first thing I learned in MI6 I don't want to hear about the MI6. <laughs> and I wouldn't eat anything you cook. You probably poisoned me. Nonsense. There's nothing the matter with the food. In Switzerland. Steak tata. Try to think of it as a kind of game, Barnaby. A game? Yes, exactly. For perfectly understandable reasons, I would like something to um, happen to you. For equally understandable reasons, you would prefer that it did not. Well, that's the game. What's going to happen? Who's going to win? That's the fun of it, so to speak. What chance do I have? Well, let's analyze the situation, shall we? Memorize the rules of the game. Ah, you're safe in this house. It's a fairly large island, and you're safe almost anywhere as long as you're with Sergeant Travis or Justine. Oh, yes, Barnaby. Two accidental deaths would serve me as well as one. No, you leave Chrissy alone. She's a charming child, too. Where were we? Oh, yes. Well, you've got the safe house going for you, the sergeant, and your death must be an accident which deprives me of guns, knives, piano wire, etc. Ah, the situation doesn't look so bleak, does it? And you were lucky this morning. Never discount the stroke of fortune. I might die of a heart attack. Do you have a bad heart? Ah, that's better. You're playing the game. Just charmed at the thought of old uncle dropping over the coronary, aren't you? Yeah. Sorry, I'm in excellent health. Mm. But look for the brakes, Barnaby. The unexpected turn of events. The victory snatched from the jaws of defeat. Of course, I shouldn't be helping you like this. But you are my only nephew and a Harrison. Haven't touched the food. Extraordinary boy. Never mind. I'll put a chef's hat on for you tonight. How about some steak, mushrooms, and a very special little sauce of mine? Excuse me. Going out. Remember the rules of the game, Barnaby. I wouldn't forget them for a moment if I were you.
get a sunstroke like that. Should have some kind of hat or something. Here, take mine. My father says... I don't want to hear what your father says. You better get out of here. You don't own the island. All right, then I'll go. Hey, where are you going? Got to get off the island before I get murdered. Oh, Barnaby. Maybe I can find a boat or something along the beach. And you better stay away from me. Don't you understand, Chrissy? If my uncle finds us alone together, he'll get rid of both of us. You've got to stop telling these awful lies. I heard Sergeant Travis and my aunt talking. People are going to think there's something peculiar about you. There's nothing peculiar about me, and they aren't awful lies. Oh, forget it. Besides, why would your uncle want to kill me? Look, stupid. If anything happens to us, and it looks like an accident, he gets his hands on five million. Five million dollars? He just said it. You're a charming child, Barnaby. But five million dollars charming, you're not. Why don't you tell that to Sergeant Travis? He wouldn't believe me. Neither would your aunt. Nobody believes me. Nothing will happen to you if you stay away from me. So, goodbye, Chrissy. Barnaby. I believe you. Really, Chrissy? You really believe me? I really do. Oh, gee, that's great. What's the matter? I still got to find a boat or something. Barnaby, listen. Even if you did find a boat and got away, if the sharks didn't get you, he'd just come after you and put you in custody. But I just can't stand here and wait for him to get at me. Barnaby, your uncle's trying to kill you, right? Well, let's kill uncle first. <laughs> Chrissy, that's a marvelous idea. Why didn't I think of it before? You didn't think of it. I did. That's right. How will we do it? Doesn't the sergeant have a gun? Yeah, but I gave him my word I wouldn't touch it. Not even to save your life? I can't break my word. Besides, the gun's in Switzerland. Where? In the house. It's there. And Uncle probably fixing my dinner now. Aunt Justine said he invited me over. Why would he do that? He likes to do things like that. It's fun for him. You know, over the cliff in the morning, steak and mushrooms at night. Mushrooms. <laughs> and I don't even like them. Good, then he won't expect you to eat them. What are you talking about? Barnaby, don't you see? This whole island is just covered with toadstools. There must be thousands of them. All poisonous! <laughs> That's brilliant! For a girl, anyway, it's just brilliant. Come on, let's go pick them, okay? Yeah, come on. <laughs> Steaks are coming along splendidly. Chrissy, will you do the honors with the salad, please? I sure will, Major. Oh, call me Uncle Kevin. Uncle Kevin. <laughs> will you light the candles, please, Barnaby? Right, sir.
Burnaby. You're very quiet tonight. Oh, no. What in heaven's name? Huh. Barnaby, you really must be more careful with matches. I'm sorry, Uncle Kevin. I really am. It's all right. We won't let it spoil our dinner. But you must remember, the island's an absolute tinderbox at this time of the year. Now, pray be seated, and we'll enjoy the steaks. Barnaby? Uncle Kevin. Now, here we go, Barnaby. No, thank you. Uh, I don't care for any. Of course. I've forgotten. Have a seat. Oh, no, thank you. Oh, come. I'm famous for my mushrooms in sauce. I'm sure they're delicious. But... Uh, I'm just not used to rich foods. How simple, how direct. I told you she was charming, didn't I, Barnaby? Well, I'm not going to let them go to waste. I'm going to eat every last one of them. What do you think of that? My father doesn't believe in wasting food either. Sensible fellow. Right, troops? Now we move into attack. Right? Uh, right, sir. Oh, Barnaby. I was going through your closet this afternoon. Some of your shoes are rather badly run over. And several of your shirt collars are frayed. I'm flying over to the mainland the day after tomorrow. I'll get something for you. Uh, that's very thoughtful of you, Uncle Kevin. Not at all. Well, what's the matter with you two? You're staring at me as if you've never seen anyone eat before. Eat, children. Eat! Barnaby's father died in an automobile crash, alone in his car. He apparently lost control, rolled over a couple of times, and then it burst into flame. Now, that's not the most difficult kind of death to stage. Is there anything to indicate it wasn't an accident? No. But then the most successful murders always go down in the books as accidents. And having a policeman on this island to verify a second accident is very useful. Now, did, did Chrissy say anything when she came back from playing with Barnaby? Nothing special. Except that she seemed kind of excited about going to the Majors for dinner. Well, she didn't seem frightened. No. She had fun dressing up. I fixed her hair. Hmm. Now, let, let me ask you something. If we were to walk over there right now, do you think we'd find two kids being chased around by a monster? Or three ordinary people just finishing huh. dinner? Haven't been this successful with my mushroom sauce for years. Must be your presence, Chrissy. Inspiration to the chef. Oh, I left my bag with my coat in Barnaby's closet. Will you excuse me a moment while I get a handkerchief? Of course, dear child. Thank you. Now, Barnaby, I'll let you get away with skipping breakfast, but you must eat your dinner. All right. What would Sergeant Travis and Justine say if old uncle didn't feed you too properly? Barnaby. 
poisonous toadstools do resemble mushrooms, dear children. I see you've been teaching Chrissy the game. And very well, too. I'm quite pleased with you both. Now, help your uncle up. <laughs> and we'll have our ice cream. Nothing like a short nap in the early afternoon. Oh, wading through that, eh? Mm-hmm. You've had quite an exciting life. Don't believe everything you read. Oh, Barnaby, thank you for changing the tablecloth. I'd forgotten all about it. Did you put the burnt one in the trash? Yes, sir. Oh, it caught fire last night when I was lighting some candles. The only reason I made such a fuss about it at the time, Barnaby, is that we can't be too careful at this time of the year. We're long overdue for rain, but until we get it, we can't play with fire. Well, Sergeant, what do you say we dig up the catch man and his catch and see if they're biting? All right, sounds fine. Barnaby? Uh, sure, Sergeant. I'll just go get some sunglasses. Mm-hmm. Been talking to Chrissy, my boy? No. I was almost afraid to close my eyes and take my afternoon nap. I'll bet you were. <laughs> Barnaby, where's my gun? I don't know. In the drawer. I just looked in the drawer. It's not there. What about it, Barnaby? I didn't take it. You broke your word. I wouldn't. You didn't keep it. I tell you, Sergeant, I wouldn't go near the drawer. If anybody took it, he took it. Why should I take it, Barnaby? To kill me. And make it look like an accident. Like I'd been playing around with the gun again, and it went off. You say again? I didn't know you'd been playing around with a gun before. Why? It was just after we got here. And I was so sure he'd keep his word. I'd almost forgotten it. If I needed a gun, I wouldn't need to steal the sergeants. This is very serious, Barnaby. Where's the sergeant's gun? I don't know. I didn't take it. I don't know. Look, you can search my room. You can search me. <laughs> What are these for, son? I didn't. I, I didn't put them there. And I didn't take your gun. I, I don't know how they got there. I didn't. I didn't. I don't know how they got there. You're late. I had to wait until Aunt Justine got to sleep. You didn't say anything to her about last night. No, I promised you I wouldn't. Just remember, we don't say anything about what we're doing or what Uncle does to any grown-ups until we get rid of them. Okay. Okay, now let's start looking. Start looking? For what? Tarantulas. Your aunt said this place was loaded with them. <laughs> Barnaby, you don't need a tarantula. What do you mean I don't? He got the sergeant's gun today. <laughs> Barnaby, I took the sergeant's gun. <laughs> Last night when it looked like the doctors weren't going to work. You took the gun? Uh-huh. You stupid idiot. Why didn't you do a crazy thing like that for? I did it for you, Barnaby. For me? It's not bad enough the sergeant thinks I'm a liar. Now he thinks I'm a rotten little thief. Oh, I'm sorry, Barnaby. I was just trying to help. Where did you put it? 
Under Aunt Justine's house. <sighs> the brew, forget about it for now. Concentrate on finding tarantulas. Well, personally, I don't see how we're going to even find one tarantula in the middle of the night. Barnaby? over in my sleep. Really, it's too bad. I got him specially for Barnaby. I thought he might like to study him. Thanks, Travis. You know, he might have killed you. Not with you around, Sergeant.
Away, I'm bound away, across the wide Missouri. Oh, good morning, Sergeant Chavez. Good morning, Chrissy. Morning, Justine. Hi. Am I late? No, you're right on time. Where's Barnaby? Oh, Barnaby's not coming with us today. Why not? Well, the major thought since he needed shoes and shirts, he might as well go with him. That way they can get the right sizes and he can pick out what he likes. Barnaby's on the plane? Mm-hmm. Oh, no! Nasty-looking tarantula. The sergeant knocked off my pillow. Good heavens. What's the matter? Fuel tank's empty. You've been very busy today, Barnaby. I didn't touch your plane. I didn't go anywhere near it. Well, looks like the end of the game for both of us. Here we go, Barnaby. extra gas. I simply switched it on. You mean, you put me through all that? I wouldn't have put you through anything if you left the plane alone. I haven't touched your plane. I just told you that. I believe you, Barnaby. I would have had to drag you aboard if you had, wouldn't I? That's right. Then who? Chrissy? Yes, Chrissy, of course. <laughs> How charming. Did she take the sergeant's gun, too? Well, I shan't feel so bad about what happens to her now. I told you to leave her alone. I tried. But you brought her into the game. As long as you're both on the island, you haven't a chance. One rule of the game I didn't tell you. Uncle always wins. We've had a busy day. You get some sleep. Yeah. Good night, Aunt Justine. Good night. Aunt Justine? Yes? I'm glad Barnaby stayed overnight. So am I. Good night. Night. quiet tonight, Barnaby, especially for you. I have a lot on my mind. You're very beautiful, Aunt Justine. Thank you, Barnaby. Are you going to marry Sergeant Travis? No. I'm going to wait till you grow up and marry you. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.
so that nothing will happen to me, aren't you? I am not. It's very brave of you, Barnaby. It's the catch man! Maybe the catch man can help you. Maybe he has another key. for the other key, Barnaby. Why not? You're trembling, Barnaby. You better come and sit down. There. You've been a naughty boy for coming here. I'll have to take away your new shoes. bothers you, doesn't he? Better? Now the left one. Poor old catch man. <laughs> he was so excited about getting the shark into the pool. shark in the pool? Well, there was a chance that you might accidentally fall in before I got here. Would have saved me the trip. But we've had a lot of fun, haven't we, Barnaby? It was worth it. Remember the present I gave you? The badge of the triad with the three symbols of earth, sky and water. Look at it, Barnaby. Look at it. See how it shines in the dark. See how it spins around and around and around and around. No. No, please, no. We'll have to go and get Chris's shoes now, won't we? No! 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 Stop pretending now, catch me.
Not in his room. Mm. What would he want with a couple of pairs of shoes, anyway? Mine has a whole right to the soul. Probably so that we can't run as fast when he tries to kill us. Oh, silly, I can run twice as fast as my bare feet. What difference does it make, Chrissy? He's going to kill us. With shoes or without shoes? Barnaby, I'm scared. He tried to hypnotize me again. His eyes were just awful. Chrissy, when he finds us, keep talking to me. Say anything but talk to me and don't stop. What? I don't know, but do it. Please. Okay. little shoes have to be found at the water's edge of Death Beach in the morning. Where you went swimming, even though you were warned about the sharks. Your little bodies will never be found. And now, Barnaby, when I count three, you will awaken. You will not see me or Chrissy. It'll be a beautiful day and very hot. And the water in the pool outside looks so inviting. It's cool. And you will go swimming. One, two, three. Oh, 
And now, Sissy, it's your turn. When I count three, you will awaken, you will see me, but you will no longer be afraid. We're great friends. You really like Uncle. It's a beautiful day. Barnaby's swimming in the pool. You will join him. One, two, three. Hello, Uncle Kevin. What are you doing here? Isn't it a beautiful day? Lovely, my dear. Barnaby's swimming in the pool. Yes, I know. I'm going to join him. Won't you come and have a swim with us, Uncle Kevin? Uh, later, dear. I'll just watch. You run along now. Isn't the water beautiful, Uncle Kevin? Crystal clear, my dear. Barnaby? Oh, Barnaby! Barnaby's swimming underwater, Chrissy. Can you do that? Swim underwater? Go on. Barnaby's waiting. Chrissy! Uncle! Couldn't we call it a draw? But Uncle always wins! Barnaby! Barnaby! <laughs> Very well. Chrissy! It's a tie. But I hope that our game has taught you just a little of how this world goes, Barnaby. Barnaby! No need to cause alarm to the others. Barnaby! Here's the key. Goodbye, Barnaby. Take care of yourself. Bye, Chrissy. No need to show me up. Didn't he put you to sleep? How could he with all your talking? I was just pretending. Barnaby! Barnaby! Chrissy! They're not here. But they've got to be here. We've looked everywhere else. <laughs> Are you sure you're all right, Barnaby? Positively, Wait till I tell you what Barnaby did. You'll be so proud of him. Shut up, stupid. You talk too much, even for a girl. Let me tell him what happened. Don't you dare talk to me that way after all I've done to you. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. I'll miss you, Uncle Kevin. I really will.